Seems Conch has been getting a lot of love these days, and that's awesome. I mean, it's always been a well-loved and respected title. But I don't know, seems as of late, it's in the air again. And that's all well and good, but doesn't anyone feel bad for good old Super C here? Poor old Super C, seems nobody loves you. Now, the first Conch is definitely more iconic and, dare I say, even more memorable. But this isn't the movies here, and Super C definitely doesn't suffer from a case of sequelitis. In fact, in many ways, Super C is the technically superior game. But I'm not trying to feed any rivalry between these two games. But it does seem these days there's fans of one over the other. Now, at the end of the day, I've come to the conclusion that I myself like them both equally and I truly do mean that. But I also see some people are very adamant about one being better than the other, and that got me curious as to why. So I'm going to look at both games briefly and spit out some observations and arguments for one over the other and kind of put them in the ring, head to head, game versus game, while trying to stay objective at least as much as I feel like being. Okay, first off, both of these are really good, solid games, worthy of the word classic. I think the fact that this one's called Super C over simply being called Contra 2 has always hurt it. Maybe that even has some sort of psychological effect on some people not liking it. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, people are fickle. Now, its original arcade sequel that it was based off, despite being a very different game, was titled Super Contra. And that actually might have been the NES title when it was released, but due to the Iran Contra affair, the word itself seemed a little sketchy, so it simply became Super C. Now, before getting into the games, let's briefly talk music. Musically, the games are both fucking amazing. I'll give it up to the original Contra for being more iconic and is likely burned into a lot more people's memories, as again, it was the more popular game. That being said, Super C rocks hard, and like the game itself, is trying to be a little more intense than the original, but both have really top-notch NES soundtracks here, among some of the best on the system, hands down. Now the gameplay graphics department is where things can get a little hairy in this debate. I think most people just say, hey, it's the same game mechanically, and I like this one, or I like that one better, and that's that. Well, that's nice and fine, but technically it's not that cut and dry, and there's some subtle yet major differences that sometimes get overlooked, some of which I will go over now. First off, the bullets are easier to see in Super C, having this glow to them. They seem larger too, and they are, but the hitbox I don't think is any different from the original. Again, it's just way easier to see them. This was a pretty big issue for some in the first one, as the barrage of little white bullets that also really closely matched the BB gun's bullets could get lost to some. I actually have a friend who I won't mention, game glitch guy, who's a borderline savant when it comes to old school games in general, but really can't play Contra well due to this alone. Maybe he just needs fucking glasses. I don't know. It's never really been an issue for me personally, but on occasion, yeah, I'll use the damn, I didn't see that fucking bullet card. Where in Super C, you really have no excuse. Your ass just got shot. I suppose I should bring up the two alternate gameplay levels. In the first one, you have these corridor shooting, sort of pseudo shooting gallery types levels, where Super C goes for top down shooter levels. A lot of people prefer the original Contra's corridors, and that's fine. I have no preference, really, it's just part of the experience, and breaking up the gameplay was simply a Contra tradition for a while, even with Contra 3 having two MODE 7 levels, which a lot of people hate. While I think Contra 1's alternate gameplay levels have arguably aged the best, again, it's all part of the experience, and you gotta give props to the series for bringing another style of gameplay to the games, giving the games a nice yet subtle multi-genre feel and some variety. Graphically and location-wise, the first game was pretty diverse with jungles, waterfalls, the snow field, and of course the treacherous energy zone and hangar. And then the final alien lair. So again, there's lots of variety in the locales. Super C is maybe a bit more bland and feels a bit less diverse, I guess, as Contra 1 to me always had this more open outside sort of vibe, where Super C takes place more often in claustrophobic, more foreign territory. Regardless, it does still have a good variety of locations, but I suppose Contra 1 is more Predator 1, and Super C is more Predator 2. Sup, bro? You want the hacky sack? Can we just kill him? Although maybe that doesn't make sense, it's not like Super C takes place in a city per se, but they have a different vibe in that way. Contra 1 kind of has the two badasses going up against the alien bastards trying to take over Earth, where Super C's vibe is more of like an okay, they're back again, really fucking pissed off, and overall has a bit more industrial urban sort of vibe, with the first stage starting you right off in a fucking war zone, just dropping you right into the shit. And then there's a lot more stages later that make you feel like you're really taking the fight to them and you're in places you really shouldn't be. I always felt that Super C made you feel a lot more vulnerable in that regard, but maybe that's just me and as usual I'm getting off fucking subject. My point was though that Visually Contra has a lot more color going on in its variety of levels, where to be honest Super C is a pretty dark game. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can definitely be less appealing from a visual standpoint. Super C often has a ton of situations where all you get is black backgrounds. I mean look at all the black. It's everywhere for a majority of the game. 
Again, that's not a bad thing. The gameplay is what matters and overall it fits the vibe fine, but it may seem lazy to some people. The reality is though, it's just a limitation of the system. Case in point, Super C has enemies galore and it runs great. It's actually capable of having more enemies on the screen than any other NES game I can think of at the moment. I mean, look at all these guys. Look at all these fucking guys. Motherfucker just shot an unarmed man. Well, he should have armed himself. Get him! There he is! Get him! That's him. Let's get him. Let's get him hard. Look at all that meat. Let's get him! Oh, excuse me. The enemy! Come on, fellas, let's get him! Let's go, move it. Shit, he's going for the subway. Let's get him, go. He is coming down! Motherfucker, get it. It's pretty crazy. A more colorful game with more diverse backgrounds like a Mega Man or even a Mario game would chug to a crawl and flicker if faced with all these mofos at once. In fact, games like this wouldn't even dare program all those motherfuckers in there. So I think having a black background or having some of the backgrounds suffer a bit, or in this case, the lack of backgrounds, I feel was a trade-off that had to be made and I think the sacrifice was well worth it for the gameplay, and creating this intense action that the sequel to Contra deserved. Again, at the end of the day, it works for the darker toner Super C, which they were obviously going for. In fact, if you look at the names of the levels, there's some pretty sick titles, and these are only found in the manual. The Gates of Fort Firestorm the Warp Mind Command Center, Tropics of Torture, Lair of the Jungle Aliens, oh that's not a bad one, Massacre Mountains, Radioactive Lava Fields, Red Falcon's Poison Palace, Jagger Freud's Fruit of the Doom Defense Line? Jagger Freud's Fruit of the Doom Defense Line? What the fuck is that shit? That, that's just sick. That's just sick. Some pretty dark stuff there. Of course the game just refers to them as Area 1 and 2 and so on, whereas Contra had level names, so I guess Contra is better in that regard. Another often negative comparison I sometimes hear is Super C is more difficult. I don't know. When all is said and done, they're both challenging games, and like any game, if you're having trouble, get better or don't, I don't know, stop whining. stop whining. But I've then come to find out that people's complaint on its difficulty often comes from the fact that Super C doesn't have the Konami code. Seriously, I've heard that as a legitimate bitch that the code isn't the same. Stay focused. Find a pen. I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna write it down. Remember it. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't give a fuck. All right, you gotta write all that down, because I'm not gonna remember any of it, but here we go. I know the Contra code is iconic and charming, but the complaint seems a bit anal to me. I mean, sure, it'd be nice not to have to remember another code, but it's not really something worth complaining about too much, so the code is different. But then the complaint comes down to, hey, where's the 30 lives? Mm, Contra had 30 lives, so I could beat it. Super C only has 10 lives. Well, tough shit. 30 lives is fucking training mode, and Super C's 10 lives is more than a nice life insurance policy. Get better at it or go home or come back to it later. You're not entitled to beat a game or have a victory simply for playing it, you gotta earn that shit. And to me, it seems people have lost the joy in dying in games, and that's really too bad. Damn it! This game is just too freaking hard! Well, that's it. I give up. Yeah, I'm Finkelstein, kid. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. No, it's not. If you don't use the code at all, then these games are really on an even playing field, so man up. That being said, I do think Super C is the more challenging game, but hey, they're both hard games for different reasons. Contra 1 has arguably less intense situations with less mofos, but the controls aren't as tight, making it a pretty challenging game. If you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you may even see a bullet with your name coming right towards you, and there's not much you can do about it. Or maybe you're jumping around a lot and a guy would just randomly pop out right under your ass and he'll get ya. Whereas Super C has some arguably more intense shit going on, but it came along with tighter controls to deal with it. Dude, that's bad. I really almost bought it right there. Again, this is subtle, but you should notice it if you play it enough. For example, if you're jumping around in Super C, you can manipulate your movements a lot more on the fly, allowing you to avoid the grazing of the now easier to see bullets. At least more so than you could in Contra, where it was a bit more stiff and rigid in this regard. Again, it's subtle, we're not talking like Castlevania 1 versus Castlevania 4 amount of difference here in regard to the character control, but they did give you a bit more agility as a character in Super C, and that often goes unnoticed. And maybe that's actually a good thing, sometimes the best tweaks between games are the ones you don't notice and just sort of feel. Feel.
Another big yet subtle difference between the difficulty of these games is they change the balance of the weapons. For example, the spread gun in Contra, and I'm just gonna come out and say this, is overpowered as fuck. In fact, for a lot of players, keeping it is imperative to their success. I've even heard of people resetting the game upon losing it. I mean, sure, the bigger the gun, the bigger the confidence boost, but I've also heard and believed the bigger the gun, the smaller the dick. Regardless, spread is a beast, and some people aren't even aware of this, as it's more of a speedrun trick, but you can actually manipulate spread to be constantly firing 10 shots at once in more of a straightforward stream. It's kind of hard to explain. It is for high level playing and speedrunning, but using that technique can take shit out insanely fast and cut through everything like a fucking goddamn fucking knife. Knife. I thought I was going to say something a little crazier, but whatever. Like a knife. Really sharp one. Anyway, it can be a bit tricky to get going, and I'm not an expert on it, but a good way to get this going is getting some bullets physically off the screen while firing and then recentering, which allows you to get this denser, more consistent wall of spread going. Then you just have to maintain a constant rhythm at what I'd consider a mashing tempo, but it's still not a full on crazy mash. I don't know. Kind of hard to explain. The process to achieve this in quarter levels is a bit different, but if you can get that going, holy shit, I mean, you're pretty much unstoppable. However, in Super C, Spread actually got balanced out a bit in an attempt to downplay its badassness. And bosses even account for this by having higher HP if you're fighting it with Spread over the other weapons. This also applies double to co-op, where if you have double Spread going on, bosses can have up to 8 times their normal HP. So at the end of the day, it really just amounts to, okay, the bosses take a few more shots, it's not a big deal, but it is cool that they accounted for this and tried to balance it out. In fact, Super C's weapon of destruction is actually fire, as it's technically the strongest weapon in the game, especially because they added a charge shot function to it, which you can dish out after holding down the buttons for a couple seconds. Which is actually pretty cool, and it's still sometimes overlooked that this weapon can be charged. Still, yes, spread is the shit and has the most coverage, but fire was arguably the weakest weapon of the bunch in the first game. I mean, look at it. I mean, just get a look at that. A look at that. That's nice and shiny. And it wasn't much fun to use. But now in Super C, it's a very good gun to have. And overall, Super C weapons were a bit more well-rounded. You fire much faster in Super C, and even the regular BB gun with rapid fire, you got eight bullets on the screen, just like the Super C machine gun. Where in Contra, you can only have four bullets on the screen with the regular gun, and the machine gun fired at the rate of six bullets or so. So you do have more firepower in Super C if that's your thing. Another one of the so-called balance tricks is the rapid fire, which you get from the R icons. Some people are like, R, what the fuck is that when playing these games? Rapid fire allows you to fire faster when mashing down. In contra getting rapid fire, if you picked up another gun after getting it, spread- Excuse me. Spread, for example, if you had rapid fire and then got spread again, you'd have rapid fire. Makes sense, but for some reason in Super C, you'd actually lose rapid and have to get it again. What the fuck? Why? I believe this happens with other weapons as well. I didn't really look too into it, but it's definitely a weird change that I never even knew about till recently. Now the biggest difference I feel, and again this is something no one really ever mentions when comparing the two, is the changes in Super C's level design. At least overall, and I think this is why some people like one over the other. Even though it's funny, because again, I don't really think people pay much mind to it, but Super C's main level design mechanic is levels now have vertical slopes. I mean, these slopes are all over the place all throughout the game. So there's a lot of up and down in the stages, whereas Contra was very flat and straightforward. Even the lone vertical level in the original is still very flat. With the vertical stage in Super C, look, there's slopes everywhere. You wouldn't think it changes the game too much, but it does. It adds different angles where firing at certain spots may make it harder to hit an enemy, or you may have to jump and shoot more, and it allowed rolling rocks and such. And at the end of the day, Super C's levels were all based around the slopes a lot. I think for those who played a lot of Contra, it can kind of mess with you if you're not used to it. Super C also added an auto-scrolling section, which can be pretty intense thanks to bubbles being brought back, which were seen on the stage 4 boss in the first game, but uh, regardless, nobody likes these fucking bubbles, it's, it's not a good clean. As far as boss fights, both games are on a pretty even keel, with the first Contra of course being more iconic, once again by default, but I feel Super C has a bit more variety. Taking down a chopper full of assholes, a big crazy torture machine, this fucker from hell and that fucker from hell, but overall both had cool bosses, at least for the most part. Sure, Super C's last boss is pretty straightforward, but getting to it, whatever it is, is really the main challenge. Much like in Contra 1, where getting through the hangar was really the challenge all along, and shooting this thing to enter the final stage is more of a minor setback than a boss per se. Regardless, all Contra bosses, especially at the time, were always cool, big, and badass. I am the ultimate badass. Yes, now I'm gonna briefly touch upon co-op. Both are great co-op games, I think that goes without saying, but I'm sure we all know the general consensus is co-op can be even harder than playing normally. Oh, 
<laughs> Benny, Benny! <laughs> what the fuck, man? What the hell happened there? <laughs> what you, I was trying to jump! You fucking didn't wait for me. <laughs> what a fucking asshole, man. <laughs> Just because of you, I'm fucking dead. Too slow. Fucking asshole, man. Dude, that, that was the cheapest shit I've seen in a while, man. If you're not on the same page as your partner, you may have a bad time. Death can happen a lot more often, whether it's due to different experiences at the game, different routes, skill levels, or just having a different play style. Dude. <laughs> if the snow wasn't enough, you just blew a big fucking smoke ring? It wasn't a ring, it was just a cloud. Reform into a T-shirt, please. That's what Nintendo needed was a smoke machine to make it more real. Excuse <laughs> this shit. I'm waiting for you to stop doing this, man. I can't see. You just push on the blindfold. That was the one level we actually have to concentrate on. You're fucking blowing smoke everywhere. <laughs> it's just so can't see through it. Some guys could come out. I gotta cover you while you're smoking. But yet again. How'd you get over there? Cause I couldn't see with the fucking smoke! It's just all right. The game also fundamentally changes a bit too, as instead of being more center in the game like in single player, one player can go a little past center, and due to this some new tricks can be pulled off depending on your ambitions when playing. That being said, again it can also be a bit harder if you're not used to it. Is that how you roll? Nobody got the spread. <laughs> Oh, oh my shit, don't God. run. In fact, the last time I played Contra on co-op, the extra lives code was definitely in order here. But code or not, a nice feature is if a player game overs, they can take some of your extra lives if you have some to spare. Here, look out for Charlie in a tree. <laughs> I like how you died when you said it. I like how you just take it without even asking me for that. What was it? You took my life. Oh yeah. Well, it's co-op here. I never even asked. Uh, anyway, I knew I had that. Huh? It's getting supplied. Supplied? You didn't steal my lives? <laughs> when you get killed by somebody you told me was there? It's our lives. It's community lives now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that being said, I think Super C is the better designed, more co-op friendly game of the two, and the publishers I'm sure had co-op in mind when designing the NES sequel. I think these days Contra games are often ran too often solo, so I think this gets overlooked a lot. Regardless, Super C is definitely a game where the extra firepower of a buddy doesn't hurt at all. Like Contra 1, having a game plan definitely helps, but the level design just seems better suited for co-op in Super C than Contra. But win or lose, they're both fun co-op games that really do take cooperation of two players more so than a game where it's just two people playing at the same time, doing their own thing, or going up each other competitively. Look out! Oh yeah, I forgot. Never mind. What am I telling you this for? You know, what are you doing? Right, left? I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. It, it matters to me. Well, we better go. <laughs> you fucking lunatic. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. What the fuck? Yeah, did did Wait, you kill him? Go over there. Get your finger out of the screen. They can't do it. I just died for you. <laughs> you guys, by putting the finger in the screen? You can help me. At the end of the day, these are really two of the more memorable co-op experiences on the system and will take a bit of teamwork to get through, especially without the lives code. What killed you? Are you dead? Oh, fuck. We need to practice. Dude, I was fine. <laughs> Now I'm all for personal preference and opinion, but it's become apparent that the nostalgia goggles are strong with this one. I mean seriously, they didn't pick Super C for these fucking kids to play. Brazzle the Gamer had to compare their arcade versions of Contra to the NES Contra. Since everybody else seems to be doing a Contra video right now. And that the sequel lumps the fucking clown on to play Contra in a summer brutality stream. If I had the spread shot, this would be easy peasy, man. This kid, whoever the fuck he is, had to review Contra 1. This prick, this fucking guy's done one video on Super C where I recorded a good 6 or 7 based around the original. Joe fucking goes retro just had to review it. This guy had to get creative and make a challenge on it. This guy's fucking cracker ass, happy go lucky motherfucker had to put Contra over Super C on his top 10 list. And then for number 2, he had to put Mega Man 3 over Mega Man 2 on his list. I mean, talk about an idiot who doesn't know fucking good games. Without further ado, my favorite NES platformer is. Of course it had to be Mario 3. Jesus fucking H Christ. Jeff Mankin Z had to do two challenges on it, prompting to other fuckers to reply to it. It goes on and on and gone and on fucking on. A lot of these are in the last few weeks, I mean. I just feel so bad for fucking Super C a little in the end. I mean, what the fuck?
Like I previously mentioned, both games are iconic NES masterpieces that defined running and gun in the late 80s and 90s, and no one did it better than Konami and Contra back in the day, especially on home consoles. Sure, Contra 1 gets a lot of attention, and it's the game that comes to a lot of people's minds when reminiscing about the NES in general, and it will probably always be the overall favorite for a lot of people, if not for any other reason than the fond memories and the fun people had getting their ass kicks trying to get through it back in the day. Again, besides being an undeniably solid game, Contra does have a special sort of nostalgia that not many people have with Super C, but I think they both deserve equal praise and love. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. It is I, Red Falcon, the vile alien warlord from Konami Super C for Nintendo. He never made it past my intergalactic goon squad and diabolic arsenal of destruction. This one never had a chance against my vicious genetic space freaks. And they were no match for my invincible 8 level invasion. See how far you can get in Super C. You never know where you might end up. <laughs> Don't, let's not do this again, please. Fuck out. <laughs> shit, shit, what the fuck, man? You saw the fucking bullets? You were clear, dude. I was not clear. If I was clear, I'd still be next to you. Oh, shit. Wow, wow. <laughs> we're to fucking die to the fifth level and fourth. Man. <laughs> what am I doing, man? We got worse and worse every time. <laughs> wanna play Super C? Yeah, we play Super C. Or do you wanna give this a continue? <laughs> I don't wanna play Super C. <laughs> <laughs> but if next time we're gonna die in the second level.